want to start us off with the statement and then we'll open up for questions. Sure. Um, you know, certainly not the, 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 the way we wanted to finish the game, but still proud of our guys to get a win over an NCAA playoff team for, from 2018. And, um, you know, a lot of teachable moments. But a lot of, of good things. Obviously, uh, Jerry did a great job today. Austin uh, Henningsen was terrific. Um, you know, give give a lot of credit to Richmond. They kept battling, kept fighting, and uh, d don't really expect anything different from uh, a Coach Amati team. Question, Coach, what what kind of happened in that fourth quarter? It was kind of unusual because it was like uh, they were really getting good shots. Yeah, they really, really absolutely. Good shots. Yeah, we had some breakdowns, um, you know, and, and to be honest with you, we had some breakdowns early in the game and, um, you know, we tried to, as we went through the game, to kind of talk about things. Um, they just didn't have a lot of possessions. Um, and even on the possessions that they had, um, they either scored or got good looks. Um, so, you know, one of the hard parts early season is, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to forecast what another team is going to do. Um, and some of those things, we, we kind of looked at what they did last year and tried to say, all right, let's anticipate and see if they run this or that. But we weren't really sure. Um, but you look at what they did. They gave us problems on, on the perimeter. We, had a, we didn't do a great job with some of our approaches, and guys were getting to places where we don't want them to get to. Um, some of our slide decisions were not great. Um, our communications broke down. Uh, I thought Danny bailed us out on a couple. Um, but even you know, getting the ball out, we just got a little bit sloppy at times there. So just stuff that it's correctable. Um, we just got to learn and grow from it. Uh, what was the decision to uh, bring uh, Henningsen back into the game in the fourth quarter, and how important was that last face-off with two minutes to go, and you're ultimately NPS Nonprofit Services has the technology and know-how to achieve your nonprofit goals. We have all the tools that you need for your nonprofit to be successful, including tech support, consulting, development strategies, and business continuity to make sure your data is safe on-prem or in the cloud anywhere all the time. Call NPS at 877-797-8776. We're easy to reach and easy to work with. Yeah, that was big. Um, you know, we talked about it at halftime. Um, you know, we, we kind of went back and forth on, you know, what do you want to do? Do we want to, you know, switch? Because we, we kind of had gone into the game going, um, you know, do we, it, it, let's, let's do halves because we had done that prior in some of the scrimmages. Um, and then we talked about, all right, you know, Austin's on a roll. Um, do we switch and not switch? And Coach Barbridge does a great job with our faceoff guys. He was pretty adamant that, hey, we're going to go with Justin. Um, the hard part is if a guy's 15 for or 14 for 14 or 13 for 13 in the first half, if you lose one, right, it seems like it's been a downgrade. And sometimes, like, faceoffs are tricky that way. You know, like, like Shock was still five for eight, uh, which is most guys would take. But the fact that Austin didn't lose one, it kind of, you know, it changes your perceptions a little bit. In the first half, you guys had a lot of cutters that got right in on the goalie. Is that something that they took away in the second half, or did you change up your goals? Um, I felt like, you know, at times the ball just died in sticks. Um, we just, I think if these guys, you know, I'm sure they would tell you, um, you know, the ball movement died a little bit at times. You know, we did have some new guys in there, and, um, you know, I think Richmond did a pretty good job of when they slid. Um, once they slid, they would get to our hands and make it a little bit harder to move the ball. And by us holding the ball a little bit longer just to free our hands, um, it allowed them to recover back. And, and I thought they did a better job. Um, you know, I think we hit a bunch of pipes today. Um, you know, we had some pretty good opportunities. Um, but all that being said, you know, you got to figure out a way, even if, you know, if it's not magic. Coach, I believe you have eight goal scorers already this season in just two games. How does that, like, balanced offense help guys like Logan and Jared uh, really make a statement for these games? Yeah, I think if we're going to be successful, you obviously have the knowns, and two of these guys and, and Logan are probably the three biggest knowns. Um, but for us to be successful, we're going to need everybody to kind of chip in. Um, we're just uh, with with the way we're built. Uh, I do think we have some guys that can step up and make those plays and score goals. Um, but if there's a lot of attention being placed on these guys, uh, I think the other guys are capable, and we're going to need those guys to, to continue to step up. And I think there are going to be some guys that, as the season goes on, they're going to get more confidence. 
Um, certainly we've seen some of those guys, Christian Zawatsky, getting more and more confidence as we've gone along so far. Coach, you talked about anticipating what Richmond would do. So how much emphasis was put on the face-off uh, against them, considering that was like an area they struggled in last year? Yeah, we really felt like special team wise, those were areas that we really wanted to see if we could win those battles. So, um, you know, knowing that, you know, it sounded like we were hearing that maybe there was a goalie switch um, and, and we have a lot of confidence in Danny. Um, you know, we hope that we would hold serve there, uh, which it was pretty much a draw. I think both guys had 11 saves uh, and I thought Dan did a good job. Um, but we hope that, you know, with, with our really our two headed got a monster there, that maybe we could do well. And we just kind of looked at the numbers um, and felt like there was a potential for an advantage. And, and listen, we needed every single one of them today. Uh, so aside from the sort of defensive breakdowns in the fourth quarter, you guys obviously hit a lot of pipe in the fourth quarter as well, but you're scoreless sort of in that period. What do you think you can sort of take away from a situation like that where there's defensive breakdowns, you can't get the goal, you sort of need them? What do you sort of take away that you think can benefit the team? I think, you know, we talk about it a lot, just, you know, complimentary to the cross when, you know, when, when it's going well defensively, obviously, or maybe it's not going well defensively, the offense has kind of got to play off of that. You know, sometimes like, you know, in the fourth corner, I felt like they were playing a lot more offense than we were. And, and that makes it hard for our guys because <coughs> once we get it, you, you, you want to give your defense a break, but then it's like, okay, once we have it, then maybe 20 seconds into it, maybe generate a shot. Just because we felt like those guys were starting to wear down. We mixed in a little bit of zone late. Um, so I think for us, trying to find that sweet spot of we still want to play fast when we have it. It doesn't have to be all or nothing where we just stand there or we just basically move it around. <coughs> we still want to put pressure on the defense, but maybe just be a little bit more selective with our choices, but still you know, attack the goal and be aggressive. Bruce. Jared in the public. Together he had 17 shots today. Was that something mentally going in, or is that just how the game fell out? Uh, I think just that's just how it played out. Um, for me, we started slow against Bucknell, and even in our scrimmages early on, and I felt like you know coming out and kind of setting a tone. Um, you know, I think that was going to be big for the team. Um, not really the most vocal person, but trying to lead by example. I think that was big. Yeah, no, um, I mean, we're still just kind of adjusting with the shot clock and everything, so we're trying to get as many shots as we can, um, especially in late situations where I was trying to get those shots just to reset the timer. So I think when you, when you hear 17 shots, it sounds like a lot, but when you're in the game and you kind of take into account all the intricate pieces of why you would shoot, like, I think that's that's pretty reasonable. How frustrated were you today? You, would, you know, you missed a close one, you had two pipes. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Um, as uh, our coach Reppert always says, you know, uh, shoot to get hot, shoot to stay hot. Um, so just keep shooting, keep shooting. And I mean, I, I know I had a couple pipes, especially that late one, but a lot of kids um, are hitting pipes. But at the end of the day, if we get the ball back, the pipe's not such a bad thing. Resets, we get another 80 seconds. Um, for Bubba and Jared, how, how big is it to have a guy like Austin who's you know winning face offs, and especially in the first half, you guys are essentially playing make and take it, you know? Yeah, um, speak to this real quick. But, uh, I mean, just having all those extra, extra possessions, especially early on, just to kind of get the offense rolling, is so detrimental to the team. Like, it's it's amazing just to have like the the flow and the rhythm um, coming from Austin, and it gives us so many more opportunities. And we get to adjust early on, especially with with how good they're doing. Because I mean, once we get the possessions, we see their defense, we get all those extra times just to see how the defense is rolling, how they're sliding and recovering and everything. So, it really helps us out, especially later in the game too. Yeah, it's really big. Um, I think, you know, obviously getting the ball, um, but I think we, you know, missed a lot of opportunities. Um, obviously, we'll go back and film and, you know, kind of, you know, mark some of those down, but uh, it's it's huge. Uh, Henningsen and, you know, the wing play, Brozo, Matt Rahill, uh, just doing a great job. Jared, this is the third straight year that you guys have started 2 0 early in the season. How much does that set up the rest of your season that you guys are able to get the victories early on? I think it's big. I think it's big. Um, you know, obviously, just showing the, you know the younger guys, you know, that they're doing a great job, um, especially on the scout. You know, keep doing what they're doing, and you know, obviously, going forward. Uh, Jerry tied career high goals just in the first half alone. What was working well for you in the first half, and what did they do to kind of take you away in the second half? Uh, yeah, um, I just felt like. Um, you know, I could play some X games with that guy, um, kind of get him moving. He was kind of, you know, watching the ball a lot. Um, so I felt like, you know, 
that was going to be my strength. Um, maybe not so much with the ball. Um, obviously, when I had the ball, I tried to you know push a little bit, but I felt like that was you know working for me. Um, and then in the second half, um, obviously, kind of maybe didn't do that as much. Um, I think I needed to do it a little bit more. Uh, I think we were a little bit hesitant. Uh, you know, obviously not looking for that first shot. We don't need that first shot. Um, but, you know, obviously we need to do more working the ball around, um, you know, getting those opportunities. Uh, you guys were number one and number two. You really brought the one-two punch today. I mean, you guys scored a lot. And it seemed like, Jared, you didn't have the ball that long. You got the ball, you scored immediately. Are those design plays that you're running through, or is that something that you saw that the defense turned their head and you just cut to the goal? Uh, I mean, we have, you know, set things that we're doing, um, but kind of just, like I said, just kind of playing X games with that guy, you know, see him kind of, you know, turn away, and then I kind of, you know, play off him a little bit. Talk one or two more. Uh, you had a long run down the right hash bar. It was one of the bigger possessions. Can you go through what you saw? You started about 30 yards away and you scored. Oh, um, yeah, I mean, well, Rappert, our Coach Rappert was uh, giving me the green light, so... Uh, I saw the slide go through, so he kind of took off, and I just ran. Um, I kind of shot the gap a little bit, probably a little too close for comfort, but uh, yeah, I think it swallowed up too early. Coach, a couple things. Uh, Colgate beat Syracuse. High Point defeats Duke. Hopkins got wasted today. What's what's going on? I mean, it seems like. Uh, some of the teams, not so much Towson, but some of the teams are rising much quicker than we might have thought. See High Point defeat Duke at Duke. Yeah, I just think and, there's a lot of you face, You know, you almost picked the bullet today against Richmond. So, yeah, uh, oh, go ahead. I, there's no upsets per se. I just think there's a lot of good players. There's there's more kids playing, and there's more good players out there, and you can only take so many. Um, and I think you know what happens is. You know, coaches are doing a great job recruiting, and they're doing a very good job of developing, um, and then they're scheming really well. And you know, you look at that first six for for Richmond. That is a good first six guys. Like they have two seniors, and uh, Lansbury I think had five. He's like the sophomore, and then they have two seniors that are very good. And that first midfield is really big and fast, um, and they put a lot of pressure on you. So. You know, everybody's going to come up with at least a good 10, you know, and maybe some teams don't have as much depth, but through scheming, um, I think other things that become important, like focus, um, especially this generation, that's probably one of the hardest things for this group of, of you know, young men coming through is just focus, you know, the, the whole things with the phones and things like that. It's, it, it's hard sometimes to get them to be where their feet are and be present and stay focused because they're always there's always something going on and if you're not focused and ready and you're not dialed in for 60 minutes like you're going to have problems um, and listen we played a decent 45 minutes um, and, and not very good 15 and again I don't want to take anything away from Richmond because they're a good team but you can't you can't have a bad quarter you can't um, and, and again you get 47 shots you know you hope you would score more than 10 goals um, you win that many faceoffs you would hope that you cash those in we didn't but uh, we didn't die uh, we found a way to win and I think if we're willing to grow and learn from it then there's a lot of things that that really can help us going forward and I'm confident that's the way our leadership will look at it at 80 second clock it's creating some stalling possibilities that you might not have had when a referee would jump in, Absolutely. raise his hand in a couple final possessions, like we remember certainly in the final four games and stuff like that, it's almost, you know, you, you take a shot, it hits the goal, you get it back, that's three minutes. Yeah, big time. Is yeah, it too long, the 80 seconds? Um, I don't know, you know, do you, do you look at, you know, if you, and again, I don't think we're there yet, but could you do a reset? And, Maybe it's just 60 in general, right? And then when you reset at 60, or it's 80 on possession, and then if you reset it's to 60 or something like that, you know. But I think that's a good question. I, I think we'll have more data over the next two years. I don't think they can change it. So um, I think after two years of, of kind of seeing how it works, maybe we tweak it a little bit, you know. But you just got to live with it and deal with it, you know. Especially if you're on defense, you got to figure out a way to pressure and get the ball back. Thanks, coach. It seemed like in the first half, all, all movement. 
thought it really worked very well. And on the second half, it did. Did you guys see something on film that allowed you to exploit that so well in the first half of the carry over the second half? Yeah. Um, I mean, when we were watching film, uh, they were sliding pretty early, especially in the first half. So that allowed the middle to kind of open up a little bit more. And then we would just kind of flood the crease with uh, cutters. In the second half, they made us earn our slides more. Uh, their D did a really good job of sliding, covering up the middle, and filling on the backside. But um, I think our scout gave us a really good look early on about what their first half defense was. So that's why we were so successful in the first half. Uh, second half was a little rough. We're still trying to make adjustments on the fly. But um, yeah, ultimately, the ball died a little too much. And when you get enough cutters through the middle. Yeah, I just think we got uh, a little hesitant in the second half, uh, especially near the end, um, with them kind of, you know, coming back. Um, but you know, like I said, we'll just go back and watch the film, um, fix some of those things. Yeah.